Now to the solo part. A lot of the mistakes that you see in, in people who is play who's not very regular to playing in swing bands and people who are great jazz like bebop players or fusion players who try to play swing you see them play overplay swing it, again it was for dancers it should it, whatever you do it should be clear so when, when you play a melody it's not about playing fancy quick stuff Although it should have some, it's about giving something for the dancers to to play over, to dance over. So if you're doing all kind of triplets and eight notes, all kinds of stuff that are not very clear for dancers, the band won't swing, and the dancer dancers wouldn't have as much fun as they could so you want to keep it in the realms of simple melodies not necessarily any type of subdivision as a as a practicing tool try to use to think about the the beat the four the big four four quarters one two three four three four Constantly, constantly starting in a very clear part of the measure, not playing too much on the triplets and everything, even the quick stuff that I'm doing, it's very clear and very leaning on the on that feel of the swing, the four beats. <laughs> clear not necessarily simple but very clear clear melodies clear rhythm and another thing is lean on the melody again it's for dancers it's for the band if you want the band to swing you need to understand what you're doing so if you're starting to play interesting and very sophisticated and even might sound good but it doesn't sound necessarily like all of me right so if you're using all your bebop phrases it's really hard to hear any connection to that song. You could use some very bebop, bebop -y phrases, but use them in moderation and, and use, them, use them as something that comes out of the melody. some more bebop -y phrases or um, eighth note kind of phrases and just a, a good idea 
is to play a lot of Louis Armstrong solos, even Django Reinhardt, Charlie Christian solos. So you have a few, so you have a bit of idea on what kind of phrases to play and where and when to play them. Even play the melodies the way that Louis Armstrong would play, you would get a few ideas on quick phrases. And so another thing about what to play and what not to play, don't play, again, like in the chords, don't play very sophisticated tensions and it could just be obscure to the melody or the players and the dancers. Try to keep the melody you're playing simple and clear, as in for tensions as well. It's not that Louis Armstrong or Django Reiner didn't play any tensions, they played really weird stuff. They could play the... pretty tension tense that is playing the flat five on the E yeah. if you're playing it so this was that could be something that you would hear in, in a jungle solo or even a Louis solo but it's very simple and very clear and it's got a lot of humor in it because it's just a very weird note, intentional, in that spot. Playing a very in in the style of bebop and modern jazz, you would on the C you would start off on like something something like that. constantly leaning on tensions of the major 7, the 9, the, the flat 9, flat 13 on the E. So uh, on the C I was playing... I was thinking about playing the... this, um, this arpeggio of C7, major 7, 9. Sorry, the C major 7 9 with the 6. So that is very rich in tensions. And on the, and on the E, I was thinking about playing the flat 13 and the flat 9 and that that is not very swingy, yeah? All that stuff could work, but again, keep it simple and most of all, keep it clear. And maybe the biggest part about what to play or where to play get your ideas from if you're inclined to play the melody and use just a few phrases and you really want to improvise every note that's cool you gotta lean on the chord notes I know that a lot of schools Berkeley was big on that tell you that jazz is about the scales and if you have all of me so you have the C major 7 that's Yoni the Yoni scale and then E7 that's gonna get the Mixolydian flat 9 flat 13 the A7 the Mixolydian flat 9 flat 13 and here you got the Dorian scale and you gotta know all those scales and <coughs> all that crap and it's it's just I can't tell you how much I hate that way of thinking. I think it's gives when you're thinking about scales, you're not seeing the big picture, you're not thinking about your whole solo, you're very concentrated in the this really small 
piece of the music of the big picture of the musical piece of the composition just one bar at a time just surviving one bar that how the hell am I gonna play that mixolydian nonsense and it's it will bother your brain it will hurt your head and it won't sound swingy and it, and it doesn't sound like jazz to me at all people just playing it <laughs> nonsense don't use scales and they didn't use scales they used the chord tones and it, they use them especially you could see it in in Charlie Christian's playing and and Django Reinhardt's playing so use it kind of visually so if you have the arpeggio or, or even the chord C chord you, you could kind of lean on that shape playing just ascending or playing jumps on that shape the C shape I was playing 3 on 5 5 on 3 5 on 4 5 on 2 5 on 3 and 3 on 1 and then on the A on the E, I had that E from the C chord. Just playing the arpeggio, descending. And here I'm, I'm adding a bit of kind of leading notes to one of the chord notes here on the playing three I'm not thinking about playing the nine flat nine I'm thinking about this is a note from the chord I want to lead to it yeah so I'm just thinking two two half steps above one half step above target note and that's a really good practicing tool to play swing or or jazz have make yourself a few shapes of the arpeggios of, a, of the tune and work about on leading from one shape to the next just decide which note is going to be the leading note to the next shape go to that note so like from you see, I could use a G, high G to go to the G sharp of the E. So I would focus on that spot. Just Heard that? So, and I could say to myself, I want to go from in the E from the B note to the C sharp or the A from the B note to the A yeah E G sharp B that's on the third string to the A this shape of A five seven seven six five five so the A will be seven so I'm going something on C could add just inside of the chord just think about how to lead to a specific note just adding a few notes so instead of playing the C I'm thinking about adding to this G a few like four notes four notes in in front of it just as leading or decorating it Then 
leading to the G. And that's the way, you, if you listen to Django, Charlie Christian, even if you listen to guys who are much more modern, much more modern, Bernie Castle and guys like that, you could hear how they're playing on the chord, on the shapes, and you could really do yourself a favor and look into those solos, listen to the music, Sidney Bechet, so they always lean on the chords, so they don't play scales, they, they do use scales, but they don't think about what is a scale, they think about what is a chord, what is a melody, and the only time you would hear them thinking about like, what is a chord is when they think about now I want to do something flashy, now I want to do something that would lead. So that's another thing. If you're playing in a medium tempo, boring pretty fast and everybody wants wants to play a bit more quick and it's nice to see seeing someone play fast is always fascinating and like inspiring at least for me and I know for a lot of people who come to to my shows they always say that like, you gotta have a few quick tricks up your sleeve you just will help you get more gigs so at, well, in this step it, it could bet, get pretty boring after a while so you could think about your melody playing kind of like drum playing so drummers have fills so play like are very annoying that we'll do it in this spacing so it would be more like one once every four four bars or eight bars we'll have one bar of like playing on the tom-toms and playing faster stuff one two three four two two three four three two three four three. yeah so that will be on, on the tom-toms or something like that or even just on the so once every four bars or when you feel you need to have more flashy stuff you should and you could add something more flashy on that so like, when you're playing mid slow like, and misbehaving so playing double time and I'm thinking and I'm when I'm playing double time it's not like you're playing instead of uh, eight notes playing 16 notes really go to the feel change the swing feel to a swing in double time so instead of playing one, you need to feel one two three Let's start that. Yeah? So you 
you could feel that I'm not playing all the 16 notes, I'm playing more of 8 notes, but in straight feel, and in my head I'm feeling like tuck, 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 feeling the double time. And always I'm coming down with triplets, but just, that's just me. Uh, it's more of a Burelli Lagrange influence on my playing than Django Reinhardt is like, doing that. Uh, could be Louis doing it a bit more, but to my playing, it came from listening a lot to Burelli Lagrange. So when he's playing that kind of like going to double time, he would go into triplets and then to. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, but it could sound a bit modern. So, so that double time thing is very important when you're playing slower stuff. Yeah. And that's it. That's all my advice is about that. One more thing you could do is practice like it, as in the material, the melodic material you're using. Try to, when you want to add tension, use diminished chords, diminished arpeggios. That's the type of tensions that you could hear in Django's playing and in Louis playing and in Charles Christian's playing and a lot of the swing, more swinging guys, um, especially, uh, you could hear it a lot in, in Kenny Burrell's playing and uh, Grant Green's playing as well. So that dimi diminished chord. So again, an and misbehaving. questions so as always love to help and explain some more might do just a lesson about the diminished stuff because I went over it a bit too quickly hope you enjoyed it and uh, swing 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 <laughs>